Hey folks, welcome to Green Acres Nursery and Supply. I'm Patty O'Pat and we're here with one of our very expert outside sales gurus in the trees and shrubs here. This is Deborah, everybody. Hey Deborah, how you doing? Real good, thank you. Cool, thanks for hanging out and doing a video for us. We're doing a March Garden Talk. And I figured you're an expert, you work in the industry, you landscape at home. So what do you start to do when March comes around and things warm up? So one of the first things you want to do is check your irrigation system out. You want to check for leaks, if anything's clogged, and make all the necessary repairs. How should I check my irrigation? You should turn it on and let it run, and it's good to take off the end piece and flush your irrigation system just to make sure there's no bugs in it. And So take my emitters off? No, just the, the end piece. Just the end the piece. The end cap. The end cap, okay. And, and then flush your system, because sometimes like earwigs can get in there, mm -hmm. so you want to flush all those out. Flush any pests that are in the main Yeah, or line. any dirt in there. And then also you want to um, consider cutting down your lawn area so, to save water. And also you want to convert your vegetable garden and your flower and shrub beds to drip system to save water. And also on your lawns, you want to convert those sprinkler heads to the um, Hunter Rotator MP sprinkler heads. And you can save 30% water with that. Wow. So I have a garden at home. I have a little tiny front lawn in the front. So I should upgrade my emit my sprinklers so that they're low water MP rotators, you say? Yes. And then in the back, when I have my vegetable gardens, instead of a soaker hose, which I end up having weeds to grow up because it waters all this extra area, do a whole drip line in the back. Yes. And also you want to be sure to use your irrigation clock so you don't forget that your water is running. So check out the clocks, make sure all, everything's working, batteries, yeah. whatever you need like that. I have some timers that I use in my backyard. Make sure the batteries are all up to date, that sort of stuff. Yes. Oh, I like that. Cool. Yeah. So the next thing you should do is get rid of all the weeds in your garden, because that's going to be taking up all the extra water and the nutrients that could otherwise go to your plants. So you can either pull them by hand, or you can spray with something like this to clean up. Clean up, is that good for uh, anything, whether it's in my driveway or in my garden yes. bed? And um, also you can um, use a pre-emergent down after you get rid of the weeds. It won't take care of your existing weeds. This is what you use this for. So that's really important to get rid of your weeds. So after the weeds are growing, you spray or you pull, but before they're growing, you apply the pre-emergent? Yes. And what does that do? The pre-emergent prevents um, the weed seeds from sprouting and coming up. Yeah, so that way if there's any seeds from uh, other people's weeds in their gardens or their lawns or wherever, yes. they don't sprout in your yard. Exactly. Nice. Okay, so in March, it's important to um, look for codling moth in your apples and pears. This guy? And you want to use these um, codling moth traps. They have pheromones in it to attract the moths. And then if the moths have already hatched out, you want to use this Captain Jacks here to spray the moths and everything. Because once they go into your fruit, you're done. So the timing's really important with this. And you also want to keep the area underneath your trees free from mulch so that the um, moths don't lay their eggs in it and it'll keep it from overwintering. And which trees are those? Are they apples really? and pears. Apples and pears. Okay, I use Captain Jack's on my stuff at home. Uh, it says for organic gardening, yes. but it really it really packs a good punch against most of the issues I have at home. Yeah. Yeah, I like that you use that. Yeah. Okay, so what about what about these vegetables here? We got all these colorful bags and there's seeds. What's going on? What's next in March? What else should we be doing here? Okay, so March you want to prepare your soil. So you want to use the soil booster here. This guy? Yep. And what I usually do is I put a couple of inches around my existing plants and put a couple inches on top of my vegetable garden. Just and then, work in like two inches or something? Yeah, and at the same time I add the appropriate organic fertilizer. Okay. Now it's important to use the organic fertilizer. One, you don't want to put 
you know, pesticides and poisons on your food, but otherwise, um, when you use the synthetic um, fertilizers, it gives you a big flush of growth. So that's not good for your drought tolerant plants. Because mm. if you have a big growth of, um, a lot of growth, then you're going to use more water. So you want to nice. use the organic so it's slower release. So the plants grow more steadily and hardier. Yeah. Sure, synthetic fertilizers might get you quicker growth, but it's kind of this at a, at a, at a weakness, at a disadvantage, huh? Yeah. And so also, then with vegetables, are you saying use this? Yeah, vegetables, you want to use the tomato and vegetable food, and then you use um, the Salpo mag for your peppers and tomatoes to prevent blossom end rot, which is mm. actually a calcium deficiency. Mm, Salpo mag, and that's a bunch yeah. of calcium in there. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then you also want to um, fertilize um, your trees and shrubs this month to get them a good start. So I buds are breaking on a lot of deciduous trees. Mm -hmm. uh, things are warming up, so evergreens are starting to produce some new growth. So now is the time that you, you hit them with the tree and shrub food? Yep. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like that bag. A lot of people uh, have been uh, buying that bag. Yeah. And also, for your um, citrus and your vines, you want to use the citrus food. And if you have new trees, you want to use the citrus food for the first three months so you can give your um, trees a good start. And then if you have any um, trees that aren't producing very well, you should go ahead and use a 0-10-10. Yep. But remember, for your fruit trees, the first year it's roots, the second year it's shoots, and the third year you get your fruit. So if you're only on the second year and you haven't got any fruit, don't panic. Um, yeah. You'll get it the next year. <laughs> so you want to build a good foundation of your fruit tree before you allow for a nice healthy yield. Yes. Nice. So tell me a little bit about what are your favorite vegetables here? What, what, what have you grown in the past that you've had success with? This is a jalapeno. What is this? An artichoke? Artichoke. I really like. This is a thistle. This is drought tolerant. Yeah. And this does well. It likes a little afternoon shade in Sacramento area. So huh. it, it produces really well. Do you have to plant new artichokes every year or do they keep coming back? No, they're perennial. So oh. you, you just cut them down to the base after they've produced and they come back. Wow, that's a cool vegetable. Yeah. And you have some, what is this, lavender? Yeah. Yep, some pollinator stuff. Yeah, and what I do in my vegetable garden is I usually have 80% vegetables and 20% flowers for the pollination. Mm, and that, so you get good uh, tomato and fruit sets because you have all these pollinators around. Yes. So that's kind of like, I've, I've experimented with companion planting and I put mm -hmm. a herb and let it flower next to each vegetable. Right. Something like that. Wow. Yeah. That's a great idea. What about seeds? What what do you what do you what have yeah. you got from seeds before that you've had good luck with? I see you got some seeds yeah. out for us. Lemon cucumber is good. That's another drought tolerant variety. Nice. And I think um, I've grown that from seed myself. Yeah. Mustard greens is another thing that's good. Watermelon. You can grow mustard greens in the summer, no problem. Yes. Yeah. And um, eggplants, another good one. And the okra, this um, Clemson spineless is good. Yeah, what do you use okra for? Do you eat it? Yeah, you could put it in like vegetable stews and oh, throw it in the stews with all your, yeah. with your mustard greens and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's really good. And peppers. Got to have your peppers, don't yeah, you? Yeah, got to have your gotta peppers. Got to have your peppers. <laughs> we're all we're all hot pepper fans and here. And then Green um, Acres. also the pool beans are drought tolerant, also, so you need to stake those up. And the sugar baby watermelon is also another drought wow. tolerant. I always think watermelon, you need all this water to make a big fruit, you need all this energy and sun, but you're saying this little sugar baby watermelon, I bet it's really sweet, huh? Because yes. it's so compact. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, so it's, it's smaller, so it doesn't take as much water. <laughs> oh, wow, I love it. What a great spread for us here, Deborah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, so we, have, we can provide people with these products if they come into Green Acres? Yes. Nice. Yes. Well, thanks folks for hanging out with us today. We're here at Green Acres Nursery and Supply. This is our March Garden Talk. Make sure you like and subscribe and follow us on Facebook, everybody. And remember, grow happy, grow healthy. Thank you.